Hey, welcome to the shop. I'm Tim, and today we're going to dial in our stick welding technique by running some basic exercises. We're going for maximum results in the minimum amount of time and with the least material possible. Now, these are really basic uh, exercises, but even if you've been at it for a while, I guarantee spending a little bit of time focusing in on these fundamentals and re-centering yourself on those is going to make a big difference. I get asked regularly where I get practice metal for uh, welding and welding videos, and usually I order it online. I'll put a link in the description, but I was at my local steel yard, and they had these uh, odd-shaped cuts where they miscut a bunch of material, and they were happy to sell it to me cheap. So I'm cutting my own with a plasma cutter. It's a little bit slow going since I just have a 30 amp uh, handheld unit to cut this quarter inch plate, but they came out just fine for a stick welding video. I'm setting up a regular little inverter stick welder because I think that's going to be pretty representative of what a lot of people have. And I'm just setting it up for electrode positive. Now this is the HTP Inverarc 160. I did a review on my channel a while back and it works great. Notice mostly I have 7018, but I do have 16010 in there. I'll show you that uh, and why in a little bit. I'm going to set this right at 90 amps because these are 3 seconds of an inch 7018 and that'll be just right for uh, that electrode. And the first exercise is one of the most important they can run, and it's just a regular bead on plate, stacking beads across the plate, and I'm gonna put in some things that are common issues. Now watch this start again. See, it's a little bit shaky, and then I'm already running before I've let my puddle really establish, and that's gonna be problematic. But afterwards, it's running pretty well, and you can see I'm maintaining a steady, consistent rod angle, and it's just pointed backwards a little bit. And that helps to push the slag back behind my puddle, and it's floating back there and running in pretty well. Now these are just some Harbor Freight rods, and I've, I've bought them there before, and they've been okay, but this one uh, spatters quite a bit for a 7018. Now you can see there's a little bit of wave to that bead, and that rough start there in the beginning, so I want to fix that wave, and I'm going to do that by putting a line in, and this will help with uh, tracking. So each time you go through a bead, you can look at, okay, here's something that could go better, and then improve it. So I put that line in, and I'm going to try to improve that start as well. Now, as we run through these exercises, I'm going to focus in on the basic core fundamentals that make most of the difference. You see, whenever you're learning any skill, there are a few things that make a big difference, and then there are a lot of things that make very little difference. And you'll do better with your time if you focus on those few things that make a big difference. And in the case of stick welding, that comes down to having your amperage setting at least in the ballpark a good arc length, angles with your rod, as well as travel speed. So let's take a look at each of those as we run through these exercises. Now I'm often running with bead number two, and I'm letting it establish a puddle here at the beginning. Let me show you what that looks like from my perspective. I'm gonna strike an arc and just hang out for a minute while it uh, creates a puddle. See right there, then I won't have that uh, spot at the beginning that I did before, but I am going to have another issue when I do that, and I'll show you that in a minute. But now that I'm running, you can see that electrode, if you watch the flux, just feeding in. And that's one of the great things about using a 3 seconds of an inch electrode to run a bead like this, is you actually have to feed in quite a bit more rod than you would with like a 1 8 inch. So it gives some really good practice. And I clean that off, and it looks a lot better but if we take a look there at the start, notice there's a little pore there, and getting some porosity at the beginning of your weld with 7018 is a really common issue. So let me show you how to avoid that. Now, when I start up with the next one, I've scribed a line once again, and I'm going to strike up ahead and then move back. So I'm about a half inch ahead of the start of the joint. I'll strike an arc and move back quickly. So watch here. Strike an arc, move back quickly and down low, and that gives time for that flux to activate and shield the weld and do its job as I get welding, and I won't have that start porosity. So that uh, works really well for me. Now, once again, you can see from a different angle a uh, better view of the slag just following right behind the weld puddle. Maintaining that arc length and the angle is going to be key. So I'm really liking how these weld beads are turning out here uh, with bead number three. 
Now I am going to repeat that one more time because that was a new electrode and uh, so I got a really good start on it, but uh, I wanna show that you can use that same technique with a restarted electrode that has a little bit of the flux missing off the end, just a very short amount. And by starting up ahead of the beginning of the joint, I can avoid that porosity. That lets me strike an arc, move back and establish after the flux has already uh, started to do its job. So watch right here, I'll strike an arc, move back into the place, establish that puddle, and I'm off and running. Now I'll move in and show you what that looks like from my perspective. Here I'm going to strike an arc, move back to the beginning, and then start my run. And the width of my weld bead depends completely on my travel speed, right? So if I want a bigger bead, I need to slow down a little bit. If I want a smaller bead, then I need to speed up. Now your amperage also plays into that, right? So you can run a higher amperage and weld faster and get a similar result, at least within reason. But uh, here I'm running this all the way down and that's using up the whole rod. You know, when I went to uh, welding school, they'd always make us burn them to the numbers, they'd say. So you use the whole thing and we definitely did that here. Let's take a look at that. Once again, it uh, came out really nice. So I've been able to repeat a good bead twice. So by going through this and you know using kind of a scientific method here, you can look and we started out with a little bit of a rough start and it's a little wavy. We fixed that on the next one but had that start porosity, addressed that on the next bead and those last two ran really well. So you can go through this process correcting one issue at a time and once you've got it to this point, it's time to switch from being a scientist to just running repeat drills. And so here's where you're really gonna be able to get a lot of practicing quickly. And I'm gonna start stacking these one on top of another. So I'm just overlapping the previous bead a little bit. So you can see the previous bead there uh, and I'm right next to it. And this is really good practice on tying into two different surfaces, which will be really helpful when you run a joint. And if you spend half an hour doing this, I mean, you're gonna run a lot of weld. And that's gonna be uh, really, really helpful. A lot more helpful than if you just weld only when you're doing a project. So by working through this, you know, if you were in a sports team, basketball or whatever, no professional athlete only plays games. I mean, you run drills and practice exercises. Same if you're learning a musical instrument, you're gonna run practice exercises. So you can see how these drills really build that skill. And if you can do this really well, moving on to most weld joints is much easier because you've already learned to recognize the puddle. Now, one question I've been getting a lot lately is about uh, identifying the puddle. I have a hard time seeing it. And this is the way to do it. You just run those over and over again. And once you see it, you'll see it every time. But until you do, it can be really difficult. Believe me, I had a hard time for a long time. On this run, I've been using a different brand of electrode. On the previous welds, I've needed to chip away at the slag and it hasn't been peeling up. And a lot of people run around the internet saying that uh, slag peeling on 7018 is an indication of a good weld. And there may be a little bit of truth to that, but my experience is that the actual brand and uh, electrode that you're using has a big effect on that. This is a Lincoln Excalibur 7018. I only had one of them laying around, but I figured I'd go ahead and run it to show you that uh, when I switch to that rod doing the exact same thing, I get a peeler and you get it just about every time with that rod. Now I've had other uh, brands where they run well, but it's very difficult to get the slag off no matter what you do with amperage or material prep or anything. So just because your slag doesn't peel up, it doesn't mean that uh, you have a poor quality weld. This is a second bead that I ran with the other half of that rod. I repeated this exercise twice so I could get all the shots and you could see I had a very similar slag peel on it and a really nice smooth appearance with that brand of electrode. So that definitely plays into it and as long as you are getting a good profile and it's tying in at the corners, I wouldn't worry too much about the slag peel. Now before we move on to the second exercise, I just want to point out that this past drill is one of the exercises in one of about 30 modules in my online course 
where I walk you through from the very beginning to being able to run the four uh, common joints and build just about any project that you want. It can save you a ton of time. So they're linked in the description. I'd appreciate it if you check those out and see if they might be a good fit for you. Now for this exercise, it's going to be similar except we'll be working in a joint. So I have a 6010 rod there and the interesting thing is that a 1 8 inch 6010 runs about the same amperage as a 3 seconds of an inch 7018. So I'm able to just throw it right in and tack it up. Now not all inverters will run a 6010 but this HTP runs it really well. Uh, notice how I started up high and rocked down into place and the reason for that here with the 7018 is so that the tip of the rod can actually make contact and once I strike an arc I'm going to rock down in so I'm coming in at 45 degrees and just feeding that in and running a fillet weld here in this T-joint. Let me show you as I approach the end of the plate a problem I ran into. This is arc blow where the magnetic field is pulling a bunch of metal out of the uh, weld pool. Well watch it again, it's making a huge mess. You can see those massive balls of spatter there. And if this starts it's often good to stop and correct it. Uh, but I just let it go and I figured it'd be good to show for real world conditions. Now I was able to fix this in subsequent passes. This is the second pass here by rearranging my welding leads. We could make a video all about arc blow and how to prevent it and what, it, uh, you know, how it happens. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. But here on the second pass, I'm just tying in that first root pass with the bottom plate. So it's sitting down low, almost like the exercise stacking beads. Then I'll put another one on top of it. This is sitting directly over that first root pass and next to that uh, second pass right there, tying everything together and I'm gonna keep building up like this. Now this isn't necessarily how you'd run a multi-pass joint, though you could do it this way. Uh, this is just a good way for the exercise to start from the bottom and build your way up to the top. So here's the third pass sitting halfway on top of that uh, second pass and tying into the top plate. So these three passes will sit on top of that first one and continue to build it up. I'll show you what it looks like here in a bit when we finish. You can see how much of a mess that arc blow made there on the bottom. But this is uh, practice, you know, and I haven't stick welded in a while. So this was good for me to uh, shake off some of the rust and get used to it. This isn't uh, trying to create the most uh, visually appealing weld bead here. This is a time to experiment and try things and get used to the technique. So I continued to run this and I ran about a dozen beads in here with another uh, layer on top of that last one. And you can run a lot of 3 seconds of an inch uh, 7018 in this joint. You can see what it looks like there all filled in. Now I welded this in the uh, horizontal position like that or 2F. I can rotate it to the 1F or flat position and that will make it easier if you're a beginner or you can turn it up into the 3F or vertical position and this is also good training for like a 3G plate test if you're working on something like that so you can use this exercise to get used to filling it in. Hey, thanks a ton for sticking with me through this video. Get out there, get some practice in. That's where the real improvement happens. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. And just a reminder to check out those online courses linked in the description if you think that could be helpful for you. And we'll see you next time.